This is one of the best looking watches I've ever seen from a micro brand or any brand for that matter. This is the Monta Noble, a stunning looking sports watch that comes in with a width of 30 and a half millimeters. It's one of those go anywhere and do anything kinds of watches. And in the same way, I think it kind of fills the same role as say an Aquaterra. Total thickness is a sleek 10 millimeters. And that is from the flat beveled sapphire to the exhibition case back. Yet despite that really slick profile, it still maintains 150 meters of water resistance with a sign screw down crown. It's also one of those watches that has a really good solid feel in the hand, yet isn't too heavy on the wrist, seeming to hit that sweet spot with a weight of 130 grams on its bracelet, give or take a link or two. In fact, you could probably say it hits the sweet spot in a lot of different categories. It's simply fantastic. Now I'll get to the details in a second, but before I do, I want to point out that Monta was kind enough to lend this watch in. It is in great condition, but it's not new. So just bear that in mind as you check out the macro shots. And when Monta asked what watch I wanted to borrow, I specifically asked for a Noble, just so that I could compare it to my own Monta Triumph, which at first glance may seem like an odd thing to compare it to. But the thing is, both watches are actually based on the same platform. So they share the same basic case, movement, bracelet, and clasp. Yet due to the different dials and a couple of minor tweaks, they come off as two completely different watches. So for those of you who caught the Triumph video a few weeks ago, just keep that in mind as you watch this. Because one of the fun things for me while doing this review was seeing two watches that are so different, yet so similar at the same time. Now, Monta is a micro brand, but they're a bit different than most micros out there as they're focusing on creating mid to high end watches. So they are priced accordingly. And we'll talk more about that at the end. But one of the areas they excel at and is a major justification for that price is the fit and finish that goes into their watches. It's a cut above. And since there was a little bit of discussion in the comments that even bled into a Facebook group, let me clarify this a little bit. Some people may have a different definition, but when I say fit, I'm not talking about how the watch wears. I'm talking about how all the various components are fit together. Think how the end links fit into the case. And as for the finish, it's simply how those components as well as the watch as a whole is well finished. Like how good is the polish or the brushing? Anyway, with Monta and the Noble in particular, the finishing of the case is superb. The polished parts come through distinctly and clearly while the brush sections not only look great, but they also have this wonderful satin smooth feel as you touch them. Like the Triumph, the top of the case with the Noble as well as the sides has a linear brushing, which is interrupted by this beautiful polished chamfer, helping to highlight the overall case shape. And at the same time, there's a very subtle slight chamfer on the inside of the lugs. It's not twisted to the same extent as say an Omega, but it's still clearly defined and the polished chamfers meet perfectly with the polished line of the bracelet, creating a nice cohesive look across, one that's subtle yet still sophisticated. Meanwhile, over at the right, there is a signed screw down crown. It's one that I found to be just big enough that you could always easily get a good grip, yet not so big that it ever really distracted from the overall design. Where things differ with the Noble is with its bezel. Instead of the low key, very subtle brushed bezel of the Triumph, the Noble is one that wants to be noticed with a highly polished finish on its bezel, on the top as well as its curved sides. It's very pronounced yet beautiful to look at. It's something you're definitely gonna notice as it draws your eyes right to it, which not only frames the dial, but also the crystal as it rises out of it. It's a perfect match for both. And again, where the Triumph was more of a subtle tool watch, the strong silent type, so to speak, the Noble here has a lot to say with its dial. It all starts off with this deep blue dial, one that has both a sunburst and a degrade effect, or degrade effect, which is evidently different than a fume dial. But here it fades to black as it heads to the outer edges of the dial, where it meets the painted chapter ring and the fantastic applied indices. And when I say fantastic, I mean fantastic. They're one of the best parts of the dial. 
with their high polished framing, bright white loom centers, and gentle curving angles. They are clear, distinct, and amazing to look at. Somehow, they just always seem to catch the light and pop out at you. I can't stress that enough. No, the hands are good. They're beautifully done. But compared to the rest of the dial, they are a bit conventional. Which ultimately works, as there's already a lot going on with this dial. And the way the hands are designed, where they're really just flat with high polished edges, as well as a good amount of white loom down the center, makes them easily stand out with a good amount of contrast, creating a design that not only looks amazing, but is always very functional and easy to read. With perhaps the exception of the second hand, and that is something that occasionally does get lost in the background. Other than that though, the only potential source of contention here is going to be with the date. The Noble has a similar date to the Triumph, and I love the framing on both. But in the Triumph review, there was a lot of people who agreed with me that it should have had a color match date wheel. Yet, there was a lot of others that thought it was perfect the way it is, as it makes it much more readable. And here, I think I have to agree with them. The white date wheel looks good against the deep blue dial, and I think it fits in more here than with the silver. Anyway, let me know what you think down below. But overall, I gotta say it's a fantastic eye-catching design. One that seems to walk the fine line between dressy and casual, keeping it firmly in that sports watch territory, as well as making it a true go anywhere and do anything kind of watch. Which you could also say about the Triumph, although the Triumph kind of does it in a different way. The only thing I think this particular watch is missing is a scratch resistant coating. A lot of other watches in this price range do it. And here, I think it would definitely be a help to keep that polished bezel looking polished in the long run. As for the loom, well, a good looking sports watch doesn't necessarily need killer loom, but I'm glad to see that Manta did it anyways, where the Noble is easily able to keep up with the Seiko Diver in my longevity test, and even slightly outlast it. As well as maybe slightly outlasting the Triumph, it's way there in the background. Which leads us to the bracelet. And just like the Triumph, the bracelet here is fantastic. It's one of the best bracelets I've ever run across, period. In fact, I've even seen some people online joke that what you're really paying for is that bracelet, and Manta's just thrown in the watch for free. As you can see, it's an oyster-style bracelet with solid links, solid female end links, and a great milled clasp. Not exactly original or groundbreaking when it comes to the design. However, the execution here is what's so impressive. It has the same amazing finish as the case, that has that buttery, satin smooth feel to it. The fit of the end links is great, and the fully articulating links combined with a great taper make it a near perfect fit, allowing it to completely conform to your wrist, making it a watch you can easily and comfortably wear all day, regardless of when or where you are. And this is true of both the Noble and the Triumph. The only thing I think it's missing is quick adjust end links, just so that when you're traveling, you could swap to a strap easier, because the Noble is also a certified strap monster. One important thing to note here is that this is actually Manta's second generation bracelet and clasp, which currently comes on both the Triumph and the Noble. But if you happen to have saw my review of the Triumph, mine is an earlier one that came with an earlier generation bracelet. So just be aware of that if you're comparing these two videos. They're very similar, but this newer version has two major upgrades, which includes half links just to help you get a perfect fit, and an on-the-fly adjustment system to help you maintain that fit throughout the day. Now, that on-the-fly adjustment system isn't quite as smooth as some others I've used, but it's still very solid and well-made. It is only limited to three different positions. But once the bracelet is properly sized, over the course of the day, that's all you really need. And the reason I keep saying something about properly sized is because this bracelet is one that may be a little tricky to size, as it has this really long skinny clasp. Fit it so that it's too far to the left or maybe too far to the right, and it may feel a little odd. But get it centered and you have a very comfortable bracelet that on my seven and a quarter inch wrist was perfectly balanced. As for the movement, Manta says they use their own M22 caliber, which is basically a Sleeta SW300 that's been made for them. 
And before any watch gets shipped out, their in-house watchmaker poorly takes a look at them. Just to make sure that each watch is within a plus or minus seven seconds a day average over five different positions. Something not every brand at this price does, but something you really want out of a more premium watch. I mean, yeah, if you know how, you could take the back off and do it yourself. But when you're paying this much, do you really want to? Or risk thinking you know how to do it? Speaking of premium, let's talk price and value. Which, when you're talking about Manta, is always that tricky sticking point. As MSRP for the Noble is $1,795, a little bit more than the Triumph. Remember, Manta is a micro brand, but they're more of a premium micro brand. So their competition is going to be more along the lines of Long Jeans and Oris and maybe some others than, say, Seiko or Citizen. And as I mentioned in the Triumph review, I'm not an expert when it comes to luxury watches or even really high end watches. So I can't say that this is really starting to get into those lower luxury levels of quality, because honestly, I'm not experienced enough to make that call. But what I can tell you is that compared to all of the other watches I've seen in that $1,500 to $2,000 price range, the Manta not only fits in, but also seems to be punching a little bit above that, at least with their fit and finish. So for me, once again, compared to all the other watches I've seen, the price is justified. However, just like I talked about with the Triumph, one of the tricky things here when you're talking about value is that there's a lot of competition at this price point and a lot of brand name competition who are stocked in authorized dealers at this price range. Something you could actually go and see in person and get a sense of what you're paying for. Whereas with the Manta, if you've never seen one before, you're gonna have to make a pretty big leap of faith, an $1,800 leap of faith here. And that's not something everyone wants to do. That, and if you start to spend a little bit more, you might run into some watches that have in-house movements that have extended power reserves, or ones that have some extra little features, which would be fantastic to see with this Manta, but that's not something a micro can really compete with. But even with all of that, I still think it's a fantastic watch, and one that a lot of people would be ecstatic to have in their collection. So my advice here is that if you're ever really serious about getting a Manta, try to go to one of the watch fairs that are around the country. Ones that Manta attend so you can see what you're getting in person. Although I know that's not possible for everyone. And if you can't do that, then just watch a number of reviews. Not just from me, but also other creators as well, just to get a good sense of what to expect. Now, as for myself, as much as I love this Noble and as much as I love this dial that always seems to come alive, I still prefer my Triumph. Since it's the same case, the comfort is equal. And I do appreciate the fact that they do come across so differently, to the point that I could easily see someone owning both. In some ways, I think they seem to fulfill the same role, that of a go anywhere and do anything kind of watch. It's just that they go about it in two completely different directions, where the Triumph is more of a casual watch that's dressed up, and the Noble is more of a dress watch, which is casual down, if that was actually a word, but you know what I mean here. Both are great in their own ways, but in the end, for me, a subtle, elegant field watch is just more my style. As usual, let me know your thoughts on the Monte Noble, as well as which of the two watches you like better. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, do something down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.